Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Winning Trade. Before we get going, I'd like to cover some relevant disclaimer material. Let you know this presentation is given for educational purposes only. We're not broker-dealers or financial advisors, and we're not making any specific trade recommendations. Also, please be aware that your risk in trading options is substantial, and please make sure you are aware of all your risks prior to placing any trades. Also note that in this presentation, we are doing hypothetical computer-simulated trades and results. They're believed to be as accurately represented as possible. Keep in mind that live results can vary from simulated results for many, many different reasons. For those of you who may not know me, my name is John Locke. I'm a trading performance, wealth, and success coach with Locke in Your Success LLC. And myself and our mentors are here to help you win in the markets and in life as well. The strategies we specialize in are called high probability options trading strategies, also known as income strategies. Now, an exciting side note is that the winningtrade.com, I've been doing these presentations now officially as of today for two full years. And you can go to the winningtrade.com and you can see many examples of winning trading strategies, including the one we're going to be covering today over long periods of time. And just notice the power that these high probability options trading strategy have. Now, for those of you who don't know what a high probability options trading strategy is, or also known as an income strategy, these are strategies that make money through the passage of time rather than depending on price movement in order to make money, meaning we can often make money whether the market goes up, down, or sideways. Now, this doesn't mean we're going to win all the time, but it does mean we're much more likely to win than we would be otherwise. The strategy we're going to be covering today is something called an X4 version 17. Now, the X4 series of trades is a series of three trades and a strategy in which we put them together that gives us the opportunity to make consistent income over long periods of time, which is really cool. Now, the version 17 strategy is what we call a high probability positive theta broken wing butterfly strategy. And we use this strategy on the SPX. The minimum capital, if you'd like to trade this strategy on the SPX, would be $3,500 per trade. The example size we're going to do is do today is going to be quite a bit bigger than that. It's going to be a $35,000 example, which means it's a 10 lot. But like I said, you can do this just as easily with a one lot. And uh, as far as a profit target, there is no profit target on the strategy. We take as much as we can get. And as far as an exit loss trigger, uh, it's going to be 7.1% of our planned capital, which would be $250 in a $3,500 trade, but in our $35,000 trade that we're going to have an example, our exit loss trigger is actually going to be $2,500. So let's take a look at the strategy. Now, as we go along, the first thing I'd like to mention is this is a very low maintenance, very simple strategy to trade. That being the case, uh, I'm going to show you multiple examples. I'm actually going to show you three months in succession. I'm going to start with January of 2021. We're going to pop into February of 2021, and then we will move to March expiration of 2021, giving you three full cycles. Now, this is a bro what we call a broken wing butterfly strategy. And a broken wing butterfly strategy is when you have two vertical spreads opposing each other, uh, as you see here, and one is bigger than the other. Right, and it gives us a certain expiration graph. And if you don't know what this, uh, this software is or what this expiration graph is, let me just explain that to you for a minute. So this is a software called Option Net Explorer. Up here, we have the asset that we have, which is the SPX. We have this, uh, what we call the strike price. So if you know what options are, we have option strikes, so the call options are on the top, the put options are along the bottom. We have the mid price of the option, the implied volatility of the delta, and this is our actual position here. So in this particular strategy, what we're going to do is we're going to sell, remember it's a 10 lot, right? So it's a $35,000 plant capital position. We're gonna sell 20 options that are about 17 to 27 points under the money. So if we're at 32.41, we'd sell off the uh, 3220s. We're gonna sell 20 of those, and then we're going to buy options to cover that or to complete our vertical spreads. We're gonna buy 10 with a 60 point wing here at uh, 3160, and we're gonna buy 10 with that are 40 points apart 
at 3260. And that's going to give us a certain risk profile. And that's what this part of the graph is. So this part of the graph, we have the asset price along the bottom. We have our potential profit and loss up the right side. It's listed in percentages here, but that's not really valid because as we make adjustments, we're going to have different, some different amounts of capital in here. But this is what our entry position is going to look like. The blue triangular shaped line is what we call our expiration line, or uh, to put it differently, the value of our positioning uh, at any given price point of the SPX when the SPX options expire. So right here, we're looking at the January, 20, uh, January 15th, 2021 options. They're 77 days to expiration, meaning in 77, uh, in 77 days, um, when it is January 15th, 2021, at any given price point, this is going to be the value of our position. All right. Uh, the current date here is October 30th. Again, that's 77 days to expiration for our January options here. Now, the line here that goes from red to blue to green, and it's the thin line, is called our T plus zero line. That's the estimated value of our position at any given price point as of today. So if the asset price were to go to, say, from 32.41 to 33.50 today, then you could see that this would be worth somewhere around $1,000, $1,300. And if it were to go down, of course, you'd lose a little bit uh, of value temporarily. Now, the thing with this T plus zero line is over time, it conforms to the shape of our expiration graph. Okay, so this line is traveling. So in other words, if I put in a bunch of lines, say four projection lines, you can see how the value of the position shifts uh, over time. Okay, so let's take these out. Now, as far as adjustments on this, because we're going to enter this trade, and if the trade or the market moves against us, we're going to make adjustments. Now, in this particular case, we probably aren't going to have to make any bit, any upside adjustments until very, very late in the trade because we happen to start out very positive delta. That's because of the implied volatility skew curves within the marketplace. This isn't always the case, but in this particular case, it is. Basically meaning if we get an upside move, we're really not going to do anything here unless we happen to turn negative delta, in which case we'll move some of our long strikes here. And then to the downside, if the market goes down and starts going against us, you see all our risk is down here. What we're going to end up doing is we're going to end up taking this position and resetting it at a different price level. And that's all there is to management, right? So unless the market goes down, we're really not going to have to do anything. So if we go forward here, um, you know, let's say you enter this trade Friday, October 30th. Really, if you go to November 30th, This is what we look like. We happen to get a really big up move in the market. So if we take a look at the price charts here, uh, we were down here somewhere when we had our entry. The market's done nothing but go up. That being the case, we don't do anything, right? So we're already here in the trade, what, about, about 30 days, and we're up $5,000. Now, uh, when do we exit this? Well, we exited under, under two cases. Like I said, we don't have a profit target, so we're not going to exit it because we hit a certain profit, but we do have a maximum loss number. So if we got that drawn down $2,500, in other words, if the market came all the way down to somewhere around 3100 then we would likely be forced out of the position at that point, assuming we didn't adjust. Remember, if we get to this point here, we're actually going to start making or start covering our downside. So um, really nothing to do here. Uh, the last exit criteria here is when the month two cycles out. So we're in January 2021 expiration options. Two cycles out is going to be February and then March. So when our March 2020 expiration options hits 77 days to expiration, we're going to exit this. That means the trade cycle, although we start 77 days to expiration, realistically, we have about 60 days in the trade most of the time. So we've gone 30. Everything is going really well. Uh, this particular trade, literally nothing happened that forced us to make any kind of adjustments. Let's just jump to December 30th or 31st. 
So here we are, December 31st. The asset price is at 37.48. These are our options here. You see we haven't moved the position, and the position is currently up about $5,860. If we take a look here, we notice our March are 78 days to expiration. They're not quite uh, 77, but this being December 31st, of course, the next day is January 1st. That's a holiday. So we're just going to skip ahead till uh, Monday the 4th. And this is going to be exit day for our January X4 version 17. Okay, about a $5,800 profit. So really, really nice, easy trade. Now, as we're doing this, right, we don't just do this every other month. We're also wanting to enter a February when February comes along. So let's go back to make February 77 days to expiration, and we'll take a look at our February entry. So that's going to be when we get to about here, December 1st probably. Let's see, December 1st, we're 80 days to expiration, so we got to go a few more days. So let's go to the 4th. So here we are. We're 77 days to expiration for February. It's time to enter. Our asset price is at 36.92. That puts our short strikes at about 36.70. So I'm going to come in here, and I'm going to enter or sell 20 of my 36.70s. And I'm going to buy, I'm going to go 40 points to the upside and buy 10 37 10s, 60 points to the downside, buy 10 36 10s. This trade didn't go as smoothly because we had a down move during this session. So let's go to uh, a couple of days here. Right, so we end up, the market ended up coming down. Our adjustment points are our short strikes. So our adjustment point is at 36.70. If the SPX exceeds that, what we're going to do is we're going to sell the position here. We're just going to sell it off at a minor loss, and we're going to reposition ourselves just like we did as if we started. So we're coming down to the 36.40. You'll see that here. That position goes away. We reset at the 36.40, and this is our new position uh, right here. Now from here... I don't believe the market came down any more than this, so let's, or not enough to hit another adjustment point. Actually, let me just go to next adjustment, and that would have closed the position. So let's go here, we'll ignore trades, and go to February. So basically what happened during this time frame, if we take a look at the price charts, we had a bit of a hard down move when we first got in. And from there, the market went kind of sideways. And of course, this would have been a really nice time to exit the strategy, right? But we happen to have a really, really hard down move. This is a really big candle here coming in on the 27th. Then we had a bit of an up move and then a down move again. So we're not hitting the profit levels we were on the previous trade. And that doesn't mean you can't sit in here and let this thing work itself out and take your full profit per se. But according to the guidelines, at this point here, we're looking at our April expiration, and that's 77 days to expiration. That being the case, we're going to want to put on an April trade. And that being the case, we're going to pop out of our February trade at a profit of about $1,000. Not bad for... The amount of work we had to do, right? So let's go back. Notice that March is now 49 days to expiration. So there was a March trade that was started. Let's take a look at the March trade. That's going to have to start on the 4th of January. That's because it was a holiday when we were 77 days to expiration. So we're just going to wait here until we have our next trading day. So it's 74 days to expiration. And January... 4th, 2021, the asset price is at 36.95. That being the case, we're going to come in at about 36.70. We're going to sell our 20 shorts. We're going to go 40 points by our 10 longs. 
We're going to come down 60 points by our 10 longs, and this is going to be our entrance position. Now from here, like the month before, we didn't have a sufficient down move to knock or make an adjustment to the downside, and we never had a need to adjust to the upside. So I'm just going to move here. We'll move one month ahead. Right, this is what we look like as of 30 days to expiration, right? So we're, what, uh, 47 days in the trade. We're up 36.60. And then if we just go to our exit date, again, which is when our nay hits 77 days to expiration. Let's take a look here. That's going to be probably March 5th is my guess. All right, so here we are, March 5th. Our options for May are now 77 days expiration. We exit by time. Our position is up, what, $3,760 approximately. And it is time to exit this one at that type of profit. And of course, at the same time, we had an April trade going. And if we take a look at our April trade, this is what our April trade happens to look like for April 2021, as of March 5th. And of course, um, this trade is almost expired now, and this looks like this is going to work out extremely well also. So that's at least three months of closed trades on the X4 version 17, the first three months of 2021. And the results for this time frame look as follows. Remember, we're using a $35,000 planned capital. On that planned capital, we had a 16.6% return for our January expiration cycle, a smaller 2.8% return for our February expiration cycle, and then a 10.6% return on our March expiration cycle for a total of 29.96%. Of course, we have overlapping trades, so we want to account for that. But trade for trade, we had a, a nearly a 30% gain in three months using the X4 version 17, this episode's winning trade. If you like what you see, I encourage you to come on over to LockingYourSuccess.com. That's L-O-C-K-E in your success.com. And first of all, check out our X4 trading strategy series. This is uh, what you saw today was simply one of three very powerful trading strategies was in the system and also the videos and the guidelines for the strategy itself go much more into depth as to why certain trading strategies work at certain times and why certain ones don't and how to understand implied volatility and all kinds of great things that you need in order to effectively trade these longer term high probability trading strategies. Also, while you're there, check out the winningtrade.com where you can take a look at our past winning trades. Remember, we have two years of past winning trades that you can go and take a look at and learn a whole bunch from. Also, you can discover how you can follow along with this type of strategy, the X4 version 17, and many other great strategies as they unfold during our weekly trade update webinars on our Options Trading for Income uh, weekly webinars. Also, where you can learn more about upcoming winning trade presentations, and where you can also discover our Trading Performance Podcast, where you can learn to become a much more effective trader regardless of the type of trading you do. If you have any questions or comments or anything else you'd like to see on the next winning trade, please make sure you comment on the videos, and I can answer your questions for you personally. Thank you for joining me today, and I look forward to seeing you on the next winning trade.